Salam so at Paggy, I'm Tim and welcome to another day of the Epic Java Adventure. I'm still here in Bromo and I'm off to have a second bite of the cherry as far as the Bromo sunrise goes. So see you in a bit. So I was going to hike up to one of the lookout points this morning and uh, take some time lapse. But uh, on the way up, I've uh, found a nice little secluded place on the side of one of the hills here. Uh, with a really great view of Bromo. Uh, it's been quite cloudy though this morning. There's a lot of mist uh, in the valley, so it's obscuring the Bromo crater itself. But it is uh, really quite an epic view. Um, I was going to go down to the crater again today, but with all the mist and that, it's probably uh, not really going to see a lot. So I might just stay up here and take time lapses. Um, as I said, the view is pretty epic. So later in the video, I'll show you how you can hike up to this lookout point on your own. That's if you don't fancy taking one of the Jeep tours to the more crowded lookout points. So here's what it looks like this morning. As I say, it's uh, gone 6, about 6.30 now, and uh, the sun's up. Um, and the valley is actually full of cloud. In fact, it's obscuring the Bromo crater. That uh, big puff of uh, white cloud you see there is uh, where Bromo is, um, and it's completely foggy down there. So if you are going to see the crater, it's, it's probably not going to see a lot this morning. And um, we've got Semmer in the background there, which has been puffing away quite nicely this morning. And you've got Batok in front there. Um, and that was completely covered with cloud until about 10, 20 minutes ago. Um, so it might be interesting to see what happens if the cloud does burn off and I will go down to the crater again. But if not, I think I might just stay up here and take time lapses. So the cloud is starting to burn off with the sun. That's uh, over there uh, where the kind of the edge of the range is and the cloud is sort of like tumbling away over the edge, burning off in the sunshine. So I don't know, fingers crossed, might clear for later. So as the morning went on, the uh, sun managed to burn all the cloud away. Um, revealing the crater, so uh, I think it's time to have a, another explore of Bromo Crater without the crowds. And if you want to hike under your own steam, then I'll show you how to do that. To hike the crater yourself, just go to the top of the village and at this gateway, turn left. You'll see the signpost saying Bromo and Lawut Pasir. Keep walking on the road and when you come to this gateway, you'll know you're going in the right direction. So just follow the roadway down until it comes to this junction here. At which point, you turn right and walk downhill. You'll soon come to the end of the road where it meets the Sea of Sands. All you have to do then is just walk across the Sea of Sands. Not surprisingly, it's very sandy and dusty, so you're going to need some decent footwear. So after this morning's lovely uh, sunshine and uh, glorious time lapses up on the uh, lookout point, uh, I've now decided to come down to go to the crater and cross the Sea of Sands. And it's really like cloudy, misty and very desolate at the moment, but there's actually no one here, so it's probably a good time of day to come here. It does seem to be a fairly simple route to get here by hiking. Uh, it doesn't look that difficult either. Um, I guess there is the potential to get lost and go the wrong way. So I'll make a small video as well at some point uh, showing you exactly how to get here and more importantly how to get back because uh, it's a small like uh, gap that you have to go through to come into the uh, Sea of Sands. And I guess it's quite easy to miss when you're on the way back. At least going this way, you've got the massive Mount Batok to uh, guide you. So next you need to go past the Hindu temple that's in front of Mount Batok. And you'll see in the distance the stairs up to the uh, crater of Bromo on your left. So it's not far now. You then just need to follow the trail until it starts going uphill towards the Bromo crater. So I'm on my way up to the stairs and it's just so surprising how empty the place is this time of day. 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning, this place will be heaving with all your uh, day trippers. Uh, people doing the uh, sunrise and then the crater on one of the jeep tours. It's absolutely crowded, but this is so empty. This is definitely the best time to come. I've been here four times and it's only now I realise that this was the time to come. Hiking to the crater this way from Chamorro Luang takes you about an hour. So this brings you to the end of the little climb up the uh, dusty track. And then all you've got to do is uh, face the stairs. It's uh, just a little bit different from yesterday. It's almost like having your own private volcano. Well, it's me at the crater rim now, and it's actually deserted. The crater's bubbling away like yesterday, and it really smells of sulfur today. So I didn't notice that yesterday morning, but uh, maybe it wasn't a sulfury smell yesterday, but it definitely is today. The view from up here is actually incredible. Up here on the crater rim as well, there's a little shrine to Ganesha. Uh, there's always some little offerings left here by the local Tengu people. While there's nobody here, I've got two choices really. I can either take a time lapse of the steam coming out of the vent, or I could try and walk around the crater rim. 
not really sure I've got time to do both and probably haven't even got time to walk the crater rim but uh, uh, there's no one here so it's now as good a time as any I suppose. If you're feeling brave it is possible to walk all the way around the crater rim although be aware the path is a little sketchy in some places. Well you can really see right in there now and see all the sulphur. In the end I chose to do the time lapse and I hope it was the right decision. What do you think? So I just got back from the crater and I think there's probably just enough time to get up the side of the hill before the sunset. So uh, I'm going to try that. So see if I can make it. So for sunrise and sunset, you take the right hand road here. Uh, so then you need to take the road as it forks around to the right here. So you just need to keep walking this way. And you just keep following the road. You'll soon come and see a toilet. Uh, just follow it round to the left and up the hill. It becomes like a dirt track. So then just follow the dirt track all the way round path keeps winding round and you again come to another toilet block again just follow it round to the right carry on going up the hill follow this path until you get to the stairs so when you come to this toilet just take the steps follow the stairs all the way to the top at the top of the stairs uh, you'll find these wooden steps just take them up and go around the back of that shack which is a toilet and the path um, takes you up round there and it becomes like a little woodland trail um, you'll see lots of burnt rubbish. Uh, it looks like you're going the wrong way, but just follow it. You follow it up the hill and it takes you onto the lookout point I was at this morning. This is the trail at the back of the toilet. Um, so you just turn left and follow this trail all the way up. Just keep going through the woods until you find a spot which you uh, think is suitable for you to watch the sunrise. So walking this way up to one of the lookout points takes about an hour and a half. And don't forget, if you're doing it for sunrise, you're going to be walking this in the dark. Well, that's another day over on the Epic Java Adventure. I did end up going to see the sunset at the lookout point, but it was a bit cloudy and uh, didn't really get to see much. So uh, tomorrow I'm back off to uh, Surabaya. So until then, Sampai Jumpa Laggy.